Magandang araw po sa kanilang lahat. Ito po si Jigs Villaflores ng Love Points for the Black Nazarene. Sa araw po ito, tatalakayin natin ang Buhay Dominico. Alam niyo po, I spent the best years of my life in the convent of Santo Domingo. They are full of good memories. But there is only one thing I learned in college, in UST Central Seminary, and that is the power of asking the right questions. I still remember Father Antonio Gonzalez, our professor in philosophy. Isang araw, itinanong niya sa klase kung sino ang pinakamarunong na estudyante sa aming grupo. So, itunuro namin ang pinakasuma sa aming lahat. Pero ito ang sagot niya. Hindi. The smartest student in your class is the one who knows how to ask the right questions. Because answers follow questions. Kung tama ang tanong, tama ang sagot. Kung mali ang tanong, mali ang sagot. And it is this one lesson that shaped my life. Sa araw po ito, ang ating guest speaker ay walang iba kundi si Father Jun Sipalay O.P., dating Father Provincial ng Philippine Dominican Province. Halina't salubungin natin si Father Jun Sipalay. Good morning, Father June. Pwede pong pakibati muna ang ating mga viewers. A pleasant day to all the viewers of the Love Poems for the Black Nazarene. It's a pleasure to be here with you, uh, Jinx Villa Flores. Thank you for this invitation. Father June, let's talk about the four pillars of Dominican spirituality. They are community life, prayer, study, and preaching. Pwede po bang ipaliwanag nyo kung bakit napakahalaga ng community life sa isang Dominican? It's unthinkable for a Dominican to be alone. Even the rule that we follow, the rule of St. Augustine, whenever we go, we always go out two by two. Simulang bulate, simul state. But looking at the history of the order, when Dominic uh, lived with the first group of preachers in uh, 1206 in the place known as Provi or Proi, no? it's a monastery of contemplative nuns, most of whom were converts from heresy, or some women of good repute also joined them. It was a community that they had also friars and also lay people. No? and. The sisters, they were there praying for the preaching ministry. The friars were moving around preaching and the lay people were supporting them in terms of the resources. And some of them even donated the lands to have the share of the fruits of the preaching of this community. And this community is known as uh, the preaching of Jesus Christ. But when Dominic uh, was left alone with the other members of this preaching because there were also other preachers like the Cistercian monks who were abbots who were legates of the Pope and his bishop died who really started the idea. Dominic was left alone and it was at the time that they were also invited to become preachers of the Diocese of Toulouse and there uh, the group went and a prior, uh, another one, also so, uh, were taking care of the nuns in Pui. They started the community in 1215 they live in community in the house of the new member, Peter Salem. And they took the, the observances of, uh, of the most respected religious at the time, the Primus attention. But Dominic put that kind of uh, atmosphere of freedom. No? They used uh, the way of life of religious for the purpose of preaching. So everything was 
towards the end of preaching. Uh, and later we will see how this uh, community interplay with other elements that Dominic uh, put into religious life. But always, no, in the context of the community that Dominic started the order. And this community is always called the sacred preaching of Jesus Christ, or Sacra Predicaccio. So it's good to remember that when Dominic started the preaching, especially for the salvation of souls, it's always in the context of a community. And from there, they sprang to preaching. Alam po natin na ang prayer o pagdarasal ay part and parcel ng buhay ng isang Kristiyano o ng kahit na anumang religious order. Bakit po ba napakahalaga ng pagdarasal sa buhay ng isang Dominican preacher? On prayer, the understanding of Dominic in prayer was taken from the understanding of the church. That's why the liturgy of the hours, the Eucharist, the aspect of the private prayer is part of this uh, element that Dominic put in the order. But many of those who wrote about Dominic's uh, way of putting the elements of religious life in the context of prayer, he was even described was to be finally free, no? to put a bent on how prayer should be at the context of preaching. That's why even Dominic retained the monastic structures in prayer. He retained the core recital of the divine office, but he dropped details and minor instructions. Uh, the liturgy of the Eucharist and uh, private prayer is a basis for contemplation still. But Dominic made it a point that prayers are not prolonged. They are said briskly and succinctly, so as to have more time for preaching. And even the Eucharist, Dominic did not only put this Eucharist in the structure so as to have food for the soul, but the liturgy of the Eucharist and prayer in general is always to give a kind of character for the preacher. So this um, aspect of uh, prayer in terms of liturgy, the hours, uh, Eucharist, and private prayer is helping the preacher, especially in his being a preacher of word and deed, to be credible of his time. It gave a kind of character for the preacher. Nabanggit nyo, Father June, na sa simula, tinanggal ni St. Dominic ang manual labor at ipinalit ang study. Bakit po ba napakahalaga ng pag-aaral sa buhay ng isang Dominican? On study, please allow me to quote one of the works of our former provincial and our dear brother in the Dominican province of the Philippines, Father Kiriko Pedregosa Jr. O.P. He wrote about the book Preacher's Calling in Remembrance of St. Dominic. I would like to quote him in saying, In view of this same apostolic end, Dominic introduced further innovative adaptation into the design of the order. He raised study to the status of religious duty in place of manual labor and oriented it to the ministry of salvation of others. Our study ought to tend principally ardently and with the highest endeavor to the end that we might be useful to the souls of our neighbors. Study became a means for apostolic effectiveness. You have to understand at the time, um, if you have to enter religious life, you have to enter monastic life. And most often, one of the expression of their life, of their practices, is manual labor. When Dominic took over the elements of monastic life, he did not add manual labor. He removed that and he put instead study for the salvation of souls. So whenever Dominic would send brothers to a mission, he would say, you preach, study, and form community. So study life is a very important uh, aspect in the preaching ministry. No? You can only give what you receive and it's better to illumine than to shine. So Dominic needs uh, men who are really learned. That's why if you see our original houses in the order, we have an office of the 
the uh, professor, now we have that lector. So uh, they would even say that um, many of our houses became center of studies and even started the concept of the universities. So the uh, base of preaching, the element of study, was very important that our, our preachers are really people who are prepared to preach, especially contemplating the Word of God, teaching the Word of God to others. So study has a very important place in our life. Ang tula pong huling hapunan ay nagwagi ng unang gantimpala sa balagtas ng taon, surian ng wikang pambansa noong taong 1973. Ang preaching apostolate ni St. Dominic. That's why his order became known as the Order of Preachers. Preaching, we have to remember, Dominic rediscovered the apostolic way of life because at that time, if you look into the history of religious life, if you enter religious at the time, it's always a monastic way of life. But Dominic saw the need that these people who were into the clutch of the Albigensian heresy or people who are weak in their faith, they didn't have the chance to listen to those who are inside the monastery. And Dominic, as described by St. Thomas, has this um, motto of to contemplate and to share the fruits of contemplation to others. So there's a need for the mobility in terms of preaching the gospel. So Dominic uh, sought uh, this exemption for the order. If you're going to look into the history, uh, the same author of Mary Humbert Picker mentioned that our communities were not called monasteries, they were convents. They speak of a kind of mobility, a kind of itinerancy, no? not being fixed in one place. So a preacher would go where he is needed for the apostolate. And this preacher is not bound to the profession, to a abbot in a monastery, but this preacher is bound by profession to the master of the order who sees to it that uh, the preaching ministry is safeguarded. But there are some laws that may be uh, there that could not be followed. So the superior has the authority to give dispensation for the good of souls, for study, especially for preaching. So with, the, with this element of uh, preaching, uh, with the element of itinerancy and dispensation, Dominic was able really to rediscover apostolic way of life that many of our, many congregations now and many of our priests enjoy. Dominic opened again on the history of the church, the uh, kind of uh, preaching that is really relevant, not only in his time, but even to our time. Maraming salamat, Father Jun Sibalay, sa malinaw na paliwanag tungkol sa four pillars of Dominican spirituality. We wish you more blessings in your apostolate. At sa mga viewers naman ng uh, Love Points for the Black Nazarene, kung nakakatulong po sa inyo ang programang ito, please don't forget to uh, subscribe and like. See you po next week. Panginoon, patawad. Iiwan ko na ang tonsura. Isasabit ko na ang sutana. Aalis na ako. Tapos na ang misa. Sapagkat ayaw ko nang bumalik pa. Sapagkat ayaw ko na. Sapagkat ayaw ko nang bumalik sa madilim na dagat ng mga sugat. Iiwan ko na ang pasan kong tinik. Bakit itatago ng dagat ang asin? Bakit ko kakandungin ang ahas na tutuklaw sa akin? Sapagkat 
ayaw ko ng mamasdan pa. Ang nakababagot na paglakad ng gabi, misa, binyag, kasal at umaga. Sapagkat hindi na ako makapaghihintay pa. Sapagkat ayaw ko ng madama pa ang kirot ng pangumulila. Sapagkat ang gabi ay namungusap, ang puso ko'y umuusok at wala akong isagot. Patawad, Panginoon, paalam. Sapagkat natuklasan ko na ang kahoy ay ginawa para sa balikat. Ang dugo para sa pako. Ang bundok para sa bungo. Sapagkat natuklasan ko na ang inihasikong pangarap ay sumibol sa ibabaw ng buhanginan. Nabasag ang aking balikat. Tinanggal ko ang tonsura. Sinunog ko ang sutana. Sapagkat ayaw ko nang bumalik pa sa madilim na dagat ng mga sugat. Sapagkat ayaw ko nang marinig pa ang mga lihim na pumapatay na kasusuka. Una kitang nakita sa dagat nang tawagin mo akong mangisda sa buhanginan. Sinundang kita, dala ko ang lambat at bangka. At sa laot ng dagat, habang naglalaban ang tubig at hangin, habang naghahamok ang liwanag at dilim, habang sumisigaw ako sa ilalim ng langit na puno ng pumapanaw na bituin, binigyan mo ako ng agimat. Pinalakad mo ako sa dagat. Ngunit, putik pala ang ugat ng tao. Dumating ang araw na napuno ng kaliskis ang aking kamay. Nabalik ang aking likod at ako ay nauhaw. Natutuhang kong pitasin ang bunga ng abo. Natutuhan kong pagnasaan ang hubog ng anino. Natukso ako, natisod, lumugmok. Panginoon, bayaan mo na akong lumubog sapagkat may sugat na ang aking pakpak. Sapagkat ang tubig na taglay ko ay wala ng bisa. Turuan mo kung yakapin ang pagdating ng lamig at dilim. Turuan mo akong ngumiti sa gabi. Sapagkat ito na. Ito na ang huli kong hapunan. Ito na ang huli kong tinapay. Isang halik pa, Panginoon, at aalis na ako. Pagod na ako sa pangingisda. Iiwan ko na ang dagat. Isasabit ko na ang lambat. Paalam, Panginoon, patawan. Sa aking paglalakbay, iisa lamang ang pasangkong balutan. Panginoon, kung lilisanin kita, kanino pa kaya ako? Pupuntah.